Hi. Now in this question we're given that 1 over r times r plus 2 is identical to this expression here, these two partial fractions. And we're asked to hence prove by the method of differences that the sum from r going from 1 to n of 1 over r times r plus 2 is equal to n times a n plus b all divided by 4 times n plus 1 times n plus 2 where a and b are constants to be found. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already just give you a moment to pause the video. Okay welcome back uh, if you had a go. Don't forget you can fast forward right to the end if you just want to check your solution. But for now I'm just going to run through in some detail how we do this. So I'd want to first of all put the summation that we asked to work out, this one here. The sum of from r going from 1 to n of 1 divided by r times r plus 2. Now we've seen that this can be split into partial fractions, these two here, okay? So I'm going to pick up on that and say that this is equal then to the sum, sigma, r going from 1 to n of those two fractions. So we've got 1 divided by 2r and then minus 1 divided by 2 lots of r plus 2. Okay, so uh, we've got that. What we do now is we substitute r equals 1 into here and we would get 1 over 2 times 1. Now I know 1 over 2 times 1 is just a half but it's always a good idea just to leave it in this format. And then r equals 1 in here gives us 1 over 2 times 3. Now we go on and to this we add what we get when r is equal to 2. And when r is equal to 2 we've got 1 over 2 times 2. 1 over 2 times 2 for that term and minus and for this term it's going to be 1 divided by 2 times 4. Now I'm looking to see if I can see any pattern emerging here but I can't at the moment. But let's just put r equals 3 in. And when I put r equals 3 in we've got plus 1 over 2 times 3 and then we've got minus 1 over 2 times 5. And I can see the next line is going to be 1 over 2 times 4 minus 1 over 2 times 6. And I can then see that several terms are going to start cancelling out. I can see that this term cancels out with this one. This term here would cancel out with the term below. And eventually this term here would cancel out with a term a line below the one below this one. Okay, so we'll just cancel that one out. And it's going to go on like this, all this cancelling, as we go down through the rows. But what's going to happen is we're going to be left with the two terms on the bottom row and on the row before that we'll just be left with this term here when r equals n minus 1. So if we just put those two lines in, when r equals n minus 1, we're going to have 1 over, let's just put it here, 1 divided by 2 times n minus 1. And then we're going to have minus, and when r is n minus 1 in this term, we're going to have 2 times n minus 1 plus 2. That's going to end up being 2 times n plus 1. Now we've got when r equals n, the last row, and that's going to be, to this we're going to need to add 1 over 2 times n, okay, and then minus 1 divided by 2 times n plus 2. Now, as I said earlier, our terms are going to start cancelling out as we come down through each line. We're going to find that this term cancelled out with a term up here. This term here would have cancelled with the term above this one. It would have been just here. 
And so what we're left with then is essentially one, two, three, four terms. So if we group these together, we've got a half here plus a quarter, so that's going to be three quarters, and then we've got minus one over two times n plus one, and we've got minus this term here, one divided by two times n plus two. So we need to simplify this now. So if we just come up through here, give ourselves a little bit of room, I'm going to copy this back down again. That is the, the sum of r going from 1 to n of 1 divided by r times r plus 2. Well, that's going to be equal to, and we need to put all of this over a lowest common multiple for these fractions. And I can see that that's going to be a 4 multiplied by the n plus 1 and the n plus 2. n plus 1, n plus 2. So for the first term, we need to multiply the 3 by just n plus 1 and n plus 2. So we've got 3 multiplied by n plus 1 and n plus 2. And then for the next term, minus, we need to multiply the denominator by 2 times n plus 2. So we multiply the top then by 2 times n plus 2. And for the last term, we need to multiply this by another 2 and n plus 1. So we're going to have 2 times n plus 1. So if we expand our bracket here, we've got 3 times, and we've got n squared, and then we've got 2n plus another n, which is 3n, and then 1, plus, 1 times 2, I should say, is 2. Expanding this bracket is going to give me minus 2n, minus 4, and expanding the last bracket gives minus 2n, minus 2. And that's all over then that denominator. 4 times n plus 1 times n plus 2. So if we expand the top out here, we've got 3n squared plus 9n plus 6, and could group these to n terms together at this stage, that's minus 4n, and these two terms would be minus 6. So you've got minus 4n minus 6. And again, that's all over our denominator here. Four lots of n plus 1 times n plus 2. And I can see that if we group this together, we've got just the 3n squared. So we've got 3n squared. And 9n minus 4n is plus 5n. The 6s go out. They're 0. And you've got your denominator again. And I can see that we're getting very close now to our answer up here. I can see that I can pull n out as a common factor. So we've got n multiplied by 3n plus 5, and that's divided then by our denominator 4 times n plus 1 times n plus 2. And when I compare this to the result here, you can see that a is the 3 and b is the 5. Okay?